latest tooth loss is side effect of COVID-19. The New York Times and other media outlets are reporting on patients who have recovered from the virus only to find that their teeth have become loose and in some cases started falling out. Could COVID-19 be causing this tooth loss, loss directly or are there more complicated factors at work? Today we're speaking with Dr. Mark B. DeRosier, a board certified endodontist to provide some insight. He also is a clinical assistant professor in the Department of Endodontics at Boston University and chair of the American Association of Endodontists Professional Relations Committee, which is integral to the association's worth saving public campaign. Dr. DeRosier, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Rich, glad to be here. Okay, great. Well, first of all, let's begin with COVID-19 itself. What connections or impact could the disease have on oral health itself? Well, I guess I can answer that a few different ways. Go ahead. In a, in a uh, indirect way, it's certainly delaying treatment for lots of lots of patients. Um, mm -hmm. That could be due either to patients' reluctance to come in because mm -hmm. of fear, uh, because of providers' uh, you know unsureness. We saw that earlier more so than later. And of course, there's been some government um, restrictions in terms of uh, ability to open practices and provide care. Um, so I guess that that's one way. A more direct way, of course, is the disease itself. Obviously, if somebody is uh, um, sick with it, uh, they have better things to attend to. I will admit as much as uh, how important dental care is. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're suffering from the uh, COVID disease, that's probably something to take care of before you, uh, you get to your teeth. Mm -hmm. And of course, if there are people that are uh, positive and without symptoms or just having symptoms and not sure, uh, they should stay away from from having care because as we're all hearing, uh, that's the risky, risky time when we can spread this uh, disease to others. Okay, are there any physical effects of the disease itself that might impact the oral, oral cavity? Well, there are the obvious um, that would result from delays. Mm -hmm. and, and we are seeing that. Um, me and many of my colleagues are seeing uh, delayed care resulting in, you know, the more obvious problems with caries, with uh, untreated periodontal disease, um, mm -hmm. and of course, cracks in teeth because of stress or maybe uh, delay and whatnot. But I think you might be also asking about um, direct issues. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not aware of any scientific uh, reasons or, uh, or, or links for directs, but there certainly are anecdotal reports. Um, that, uh, well, <laughs> there are uh, reports of possible loss of teeth or tooth mobility. And then of course, there are uh, symptoms of loss of taste and loss of smell associated with the disease while not associated with teeth, certainly can impact uh, somebody's uh, oral health or health in general. Okay, well, also another um, major symptom of COVID-19 is just inflammation throughout the body. Could this inflammation impact the oral, oral cavity as well? That um, is probably above my pay grade to really answer in terms of uh, giving you any kind of scientific-based authority. Um, so I would probably give my answer with that, with that caveat. Um, but I do have um, some of my own personal opinions that okay. I think are at least based on uh, some of my training, and I'm, and I'm happy to give those. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the inflammation and they, they talk two things that are at the basis of this disease. One is this cytokine storm that certainly is a, a huge part of inflammation. And the other is the impact that it has on blood vessels. So there are, again, anecdotal reports of patients that are having issues that are related to either one or both of these. It certainly is um, possible that the inflammation impacting the, uh, the blood supply could then affect, say, the pulpal health of a tooth, since we have mm -hmm. some very tiny uh, vessels going into a tooth that deal with my specialty of endodontics. Right. And of course, the blood vessels that affect the periodontium, which might impact um, teeth in terms of looseness or falling out, which is some of what you're, what you're hearing uh, as a result of this disease. Okay, and with these stories um, just getting out there into the mainstream press, surely a lot of patients will be coming to you and to other endodontists and other dentists in any specialty really saying, hey, 
what could I do to protect myself? Or is this is something I'm worried about? What kind of advice would you give to those patients who are concerned about the uh, connections or impacts between the disease and their own oral health? My bottom line advice would be uh, don't neglect your health, especially your oral health, mm -hmm. and have a bit of confidence in our profession and in our and in our system. I think that, uh, well, our own president, Alan Gluskin of the American Association of Endodontists, has done a great job of, um, I will say, doing a virtual tour of the uh, mm -hmm. of the country, giving interviews, print, uh, radio, uh, television interviews, getting the word out to people that it is still important to take care of their, their teeth mm -hmm. and that the care that we are providing is as safe as we can at this point. The mm -hmm. ADA has also been doing a, a great job of getting the word out that, you know, it's still important to get care and that it's safe. They've tried to, the ADA is the, the they here, um, monitor, at least keep, keep their ears open to, you know, is it safe? Mm -hmm. uh, are there cases of transmission of this, of this disease happening in a dental office, either from patient to provider or vice versa, from provider to a patient? And so far, a dental office has been determined to be a very safe place to be. On a personal level, I'm, I feel safer when I'm in the office treating patients than I do if I'm asked to stop at the grocery store on my way home mm -hmm. from work because my wife needs uh, some groceries and is uh, sending me there instead. So I think in that sense, we wanna get the word out to, uh, to patients that it's safe. On a more local level, I'm a, I'm a practitioner in Connecticut. Our state dental association recently sent out a survey to the public mm -hmm. and nine out of 10 patients responded that they would feel safe going into a dental office for care. So that tells me that I think we're doing a pretty good job getting the word out that yes, it is safe. We're doing everything that we can. Okay, and are there any particular um, places where dentists can find resources to help communicate that message to patients and potential patients to let them know, yes, it is safe to come back and get care and protect your teeth? I think there's resources both, both for dentists and for uh, patients. And, there, and I would caution people to not use just the Google search because uh, mm -hmm. today anybody and everybody can be an expert uh, on, on Google and it's not right. really a, a, a peer reviewed or, or scientifically based uh, source necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, our own AAE has a great website, aae.org. When you're up there on the, uh, the home page, there's, there's two quick buttons that are really easy to find. One is for patients, one is for, for providers. If you mm -hmm. click on either of those, you are able to go in and get COVID resources. Okay. Likewise for the ADA, you can go on to ada.org and, and, and do the same. I'm, I'm stressing this because for me, as a you know wet gloved rather than wet fingered clinician, I guess, or practitioner, mm -hmm. initially when this whole pandemic started, you would have the CDC coming out and saying things, OSHA coming out and saying things, and other organizations. They didn't always say the same thing or give us the same advice on how to proceed. Right. Well, our organized dentistry, the AAE and the ADA, they are taking this information. We have great staff people in both organizations. Mm -hmm. They are digesting this information, and we have scientific-based people in both of these organizations. They have digested it and given us recommendations on how to go about this so that we can still maintain our practices and treat patients safely. So I would use those resources of organized dentistry because they're doing a lot of the work for us. Of course, anybody can go to OSHA and CDC and look at those sites themselves, mm -hmm. but then you're, you know, you're, you're getting it from the source, but you then have to uh, go through, digest it and properly formulate it. And at times, uh, integrate the differences between the organizations. Okay, and uh, just looking ahead, um, as vaccines become available, um, more infection control protocols are put into place, what do you see is next for, for the future of dentistry and oral health and how 
the um, disease is going to impact us going forward in the future, even once we've quote unquote beaten the disease. Yes, certainly this is an opinion and my, my conjecture, but yes, sure. you asked it that way. So here goes. I think that most of the PPE, the, uh, the changes that we've been doing in terms of uh, protecting us and our, our patients will uh, maintain uh, mm -hmm. even after COVID. I, I think it's gonna be the new normal as, as we're saying. Um, for me personally, uh, the, the vaccine, yes, I'll get it once I can. Um, I know that all vaccines are not 100% effective. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people don't actually get that um, immunity. And also the immunity isn't always 100%, um, but I am still looking forward to it in the sense that it'll be a huge step forward in protecting us. At the very least, it'll decrease the number of hospitalizations and deaths due to this disease. And that's a great thing. Uh, but like I started saying, uh, you know, with that said, there will still be changes to the uh, environments within a dental operatory in terms of the PPEs. And we're going we're gonna to see those, I, I believe, going through. I'm old enough now where it was uh, bloodborne pathogens uh, mm -hmm. earlier in my career. And now we have more aerosol-borne uh, pathogens. Uh, so we're going to have to protect ourselves and our patients um, both ways. The scary thing, I, I think, for the profession, it's probably not going to impact me as many as my colleagues because of my uh, older years uh, in the field. But um, this is obviously hurt us all financially. Mm -hmm. um, there is going to be an increased amount of overhead that um, all practices will be facing in the future. And... Um, somehow managing despite that increased overhead and the increasing cost controls through dental insurance, that will be a financial hardship that will have to be addressed. Okay, and uh, also just looking ahead otherwise, um, you say that many of these changes that we're seeing in terms of infection control and wearing PPE are, are going to be permanent. Do you expect to see um, some longer term studies of COVID-19's effect on oral health going forward? As you said earlier, we don't have that data yet. It's all anecdotal, but do you think that's going to be a place that we're going to be researching looking ahead? Yes, I, I suspect that it is being done now. Um, when you introduced me, you mentioned that I'm a uh, clinical assistant professor at Boston University. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, I am. I'm a volunteer there. I live in Connecticut. Um, I used to go up to uh, Boston University every third week to volunteer. Mm. I've been up once <laughs> since COVID started. So to say that I'm as in tune with the academic or research side of things um, as even I used to be earlier in the year uh, would be wrong. But I am very confident that that research is being done now and we will see those results. As, and I think that answers your question. Okay. Um, do you have any other final comments about um, the state of endodontics or the profession right now or um, other advice you could give to fellow pr practitioners about bringing those patients back in and reassuring them that things are safe and we could continue to provide quality oral health care? Getting the word out from um, the dental offices to the, to the patients is, is probably the next step. Mm -hmm. um, that is going to impact most of our, our practices. And you know, I think the organized dentistry is, a, is doing a good job on their part getting the word out. I think something like this is probably a good idea. Thank you uh, for welcome. doing it. And if other um, um, media uh, can interview local dentists to help get the word out to patients that Yes, we are still open for business, and it's a lot safer going to a dental office than your grocery store, like I mentioned earlier. That's great. Uh, in the past, obviously, the best way to communicate has been face-to-face, -face and mm -hmm. preferably with someone that you know. So that dentist or dental provider speaking to their patient face-to-face, -face, obviously, is the most effective. But this is a new ball game. Uh, that's not the best way under the circumstances. So Local dentists are going to have to get the word out. They're going to have to refer their patients to the proper science that we have, what little science we have, um, that we are 
looking out for them. And they're going to have to use every means at their disposal, whether it's their own website, whether it's their own Facebook page, whether they do uh, emails to their patients mm -hmm. or, or texting services. Uh, co communication and contact are important. And probably more important, not just to get this information out about the safety, but a lot of people are in silos now. We're spending a lot more time at home. And there is, we, we actually didn't really talk about stress and how it relates to dentistry. I should have mentioned earlier, but because we're all alone, we're all more stressed just in general. Um, so by reaching out and communicating, that's gonna help establish that bond or relationship with, with the patient um, to hopefully decrease that stress and get them back into the office. And I should add while I'm on, on stress, uh, it's not just a question of uh, caries and periodontal disease. We're seeing patients that are, that are taking out their tension and their stress on their teeth. Mm -hmm. And they are actually clenching and grinding and breaking teeth. Uh, in my own practice, I was a little slower to see that than from some of my colleagues, especially some of my endodontic colleagues. But our patients are stressed. And unfortunately, they're taking it out on their teeth. And um, that is an issue, too. Okay. And um, I think we could end it there. We've had a uh some great advice about how we can reach out to dentists and uh, reach out to our patients and just let them know that it is safe to return to the practice and hopefully mitigate any of these negative impacts of, uh, or on oral health that we're seeing from the disease. Thank you so much for your time and your insight today, doctor. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate it. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.